Uh, welcome back from that report. Now, the success of large-scale capital projects depends on the ability of a project manager to bring together diverse and multi-locational teams. This is more pronounced in the public sector as project managers must also deal with the multiple stakeholders whose opinions could strongly influence the outcome. In line with this, there is a need for governments and organizations to focus on appropriately planning and executing projects that can create business value, deliver benefits, and drive return on investment. Now, Bolaho Oyelaki is the managing director of Infinity Point Nigeria Limited, a growing technology driven product and service engineering company, and the executive director of Casting Crown Company, one of the leading green building and environmental sustainability firms in Nigeria. He is a seasoned and versatile architect whose experiences in green building solutions, environmental sustainability, project management, ed tech, and social work span across over 15 years. He is a member of a number of local and international professional bodies. He is the, or currently the president of International EdTech Association of Quantique School of Business and Technology, the United States of America, and the outgoing vice president of the membership and outreach of the Project Management Institute Nigeria chapter. He joins me now to discuss further on project management in the country. Many thanks for joining me, Bola Hall. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay. Now, so let's start by uh, talking about project management for, for those who don't really understand it. What is it really and how influential is it in uh, uh, organizations uh, in uh, Nigeria or beyond Nigeria? Okay, thank you. Um, first and foremost, I want to appreciate the privilege to come here to talk about project management uh, because one of the things that um, we haven't given more concentration on is the fact that uh, we've not been amplifying the way we need to talk about project management because everything about life is about projects. Mm. Uh, so let me begin to define what a project is. A project is a temporary endeavor that you undertake in order to deliver mm. desirable outcomes. I mean, embedded in that definition, a whole number of things that need to be underscored. Mm temporary endeavor. There are things that you get to do over a period of time, time bound, that is focused on delivering value to people. Um, the current situation we find ourselves in today is the fact that we live in project economy. There's a concept that was developed a few years ago in Project Management Institute that we'll call project economy because mm -hmm. there's a need to drive value. You know, there's a need to amplify the presence of value in all of humanity. So um, coming back to, I mean, talking about project management and why it is important, uh, when you look at the vast um, activities that have been undertaken by men, you know, on a temporary basis, okay, which makes it qualified to be a project, the way we go about doing those things, you know, does not necessarily end in delivering value to people. The mm -hmm. outcomes are not desirable as, as such. When you look around in a community here in Nigeria, in Lagos State and across the different states, you see um, the way governments um, impute money, I mean, devote money to um, um, carry out different endeavors, projects, programs. The end result does not necessarily deliver value to people. And that's mm -hmm. why there are a whole lot of questions that are being asked by masses. So how do we change these narratives? That's what, where the imperatives of project management comes in. Okay. Project management is... Uh, um, gives a clear indication to how projects need to be properly conducted. There are standards, there are measures, there are principles, there are processes that are to be followed. Mm. Things are not done, you know, like um, as if they are not um, well guided. There are guided principles, there are standards mm. that need to be followed, that need to be known. And the interesting thing, like I keep telling people, what you don't know, you don't know. Mm. Why people go to school to study is because they need to acquire knowledge, knowledge basic knowledge, true. know the principles that undergird a particular discipline for them to be able to practice within the confines of the standards. True. This is what project management is all about. Okay, so in passing, now, I noticed you mentioned the project um, economy. So is there a correlation between project management and project economy? Yeah, exactly. So project management is more like the general standards is the discipline it's where, I mean, that undergirds the, the performance of projects, okay? It helps for you to understand how projects need to be organized mm. within the project environment. So when you're talking about project economy, 
it is a concept that has been developed by Project Management Institute to explain the need for us to drive value. It's about value proposition. We're not just going to embark in on projects simply because we need to carry our projects. Human endeavors have to be defined with a singular goal of delivering value to people. Mm. And that's what project economy is all about. Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, project management and how we can actually spur it and to make it um, better in terms of um, creativity and, um, of course, uh, innovation. So how can that be brought to bear uh, in the work of um, project managers? Okay, um, let me start from behind, you know, talk about what the rules and responsibilities of a project manager mm. ought to be. Again, it starts from acquiring knowledge. Okay. You know, um, when we're talking about the project management discipline itself, it's not just enough to say I've gone to school, I've studied, you know, just like medicine, you know, you have medical student goes through the entire learning process, then come out, go on uh, a year internship, they call it housemanship, then afterwards, you know, when you graduate, you are meant to proceed for your um, professional certification that will give you license for you to practice. The same thing applies to project, the field of project management. Mm. When you've gone to school to study whichever relevant discipline it is, it is important for you if you want to go, you know, on the uh, trajectory of practicing as a project manager, you need to yeah. be certified. Okay. So the question I used to put out there is, when you're looking at project management discipline mm. in its entirety, you cannot rule out the certification for mm. project managers, people who are meant to carry out the discipline, who are meant to practice the mm -hmm. discipline itself. Mm. And I think that's where the issue usually lies. So, I mean, look at the areas of project managers do we have. The question we need to ask is how many of them are certified? Okay. So now bring it back to the question you asked. Mm. When you have uncertified project managers practicing, yeah. what you will have as a result is quackery. Yeah. What you will have as a result is because, non deliverable because, of outcomes. Yeah, because we have like lots of people now they tell you that they are project managers and I wonder I mean, if they have certification of the part of PMI or not. It's so I mean so so annoying really when you look at the industry generally. Okay. I think it started not necessarily with project management, started with other um, discipline within the industry mm. where everybody just assume positions and take on roles and responsibilities. And unfortunately, we have regulatory bodies mm. who are supposed to ensure that we don't have quackery practices, we don't have sharp practices as a twer. But I think project management is now driving the need for us mm. to return back to you know, what's supposed to be the actual practices. So licensing and certifying project managers yeah. will present themselves in the field of practice for them to be able to do the needful. Because okay. like I said, there are standards, there are processes, there are principles, and there are people that need to be considered. These values are meant for human beings, are meant for us to, to, to you know, embrace and relate with. But when the certified people are not, hard, I mean, are not put out there for them to be able to deliver these values, what we'll have is no value. Okay. You know, and that's what we'll have you know, you know, across board in the oh. different industry. Okay, let me take you back to last year at your conference, uh, which was um, themed uh, Resolving Project Failure Issues in Public and Private Sector. So at that particular conference, if I remember, there was a call for uh, national policy to address uh, some of these challenges uh, with project managing, management and project failure in the country. So, so far, it's been about eight months. Uh, have things changed or uh, what's different in that line? Hmm. That's, that's a very good question. Unfortunately, uh, by my personal appraiser, you know, not, I mean, not much difference has been achieved in the past eight months. And of course, there are many reasons that one can easily put forward to explain this. I mean, we just, come out of, I mean, we just came out of election, mm. and that took quite a number of um, um, essence from us. And of course, we all know the way election processes in Nigeria. Once there's election, mm. many things, things go into comatose mm. and all of that. So then coming out of elections, things are just trying to pick up, you know, dealing with inflation, dealing with a lot of um, economic challenges and crises mm. are there. But generally, the focus for us in Project Management Institutes in Nigeria is the fact that we need to establish more collaborative efforts. We need to collaborate more with uh, people within the industry, professionals within the industry, okay. for us to drive, you know, and emphasize more on certifying professionals for them to be uh, uh, out there to practice as a certified project managers. Then second, um, 
I'm aware that there is already a hack, I mean, an act established in place, mm -hmm. you know, CIPMN Act of 2010. You know, one of the things we're, you know, trying to focus on is how to ensure that this act, you know, is fully implemented. Because if the act is fully implemented, it's going to resolve, have mm -hmm. issue, all the essence of the problems that mm -hmm. we have, you know, in the industry. And one of the hacks is about even the process of acquiring the knowledge in project management. Okay. We need to go back to our curriculum in schools. What exactly are people learning? Okay, is project management also seen as a critical learning uh, uh, um, tool? Is it seen as a critical learning curriculum that needs to be imputed, just like everybody is talking about technology now, because mm. that's the future. So. Whatever course you're studying, you need to have an integration of technology in it. Likewise, project management. And is it also interesting to know that project management is, 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 a, is, a, is a skill for life. Mm. So it goes beyond just looking at the formality of project management. Individually, we perform projects every day. We mm. engage in different intervals, which underscore what the meaning of a project is. So everybody needs to acquire the skills. Okay. as a project manager. Okay, before we take a doing. break, I'll just ask one more question. Uh, we'll take a break and we'll talk about um, building collapses and, of course, uh, the role that um, PMI pl uh, uh, plays in all of that. I read a report. It's on an um, AU agenda of um, 2063. Uh, look at that project management in Nigeria and, of course, maybe the continent. Do you really think that... Uh, we have the skilled manpower to achieve uh, the strategic framework for delivering on Africa's goal for inclusive and sustainable development. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I'm happy to inform you that uh, this is at the forefront of our um, activities. I mean, in the past few weeks and up until the end of the year. In fact, we're having an African conference um, in a few months' time, specifically in September, and mm -hmm. this is one of the things that will form the base of a conversation during the conference in Kenya. Uh, as project managers, we always seek to contribute to the development of a continent, Africa. So one of the things that we'll be doing in the conference mm -hmm. is to drive you know, meaningful conversations around how we can participate in achieving the AU um, 2063 goal, which is achieving one Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things, one of the hurts that have happened to us in Africa through colonization and other effects after post-colonization is the fact that we have that defensive, uh, um, divisive mindset. We don't see ourselves as a united continent. Mm. You know, you go to other African continents, I mean, other African countries, and um, they, see, they don't see that brotherhood, mm. okay? So there is no um, um, collective effort in developing a continent. This is one of the things that this conference is going to be drive, driving and also be addressing. And talking about the angle of sustainable development goals, mm -hmm. we know that the current goal is targeted towards being achieved by 2030. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us to be able to accomplish that, there are a whole lot of things that have to be done currently. If you look at the timeline mm -hmm. from now to 2030, we're just, just seven years, mm -hmm. and there's still a lot of gaps okay. that need to be filled. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're hoping that uh, some of the standards, some of the principles, concepts that we've developed, including project economy, yeah. which basically focused on driving value, okay. are part of what we're going to be developing, creating new streams of projects mm. that focused on delivering value to people across different industries, across mm. different value streams. And also empowering people with knowledge, because knowledge is key. Education okay. is a key to every form of development. So uh, one of the things that we're also going to be focusing on is how we can move into okay. the education sector to empower youth, have student inclusion in what we do as an organization. I was talking about uh, building collapse, uh, building collapses, which is like a, a major trend in most uh, cities, uh, Lagos and some other cities in um, Nigeria have been um, affected by that um, scourge. What uh, is the role of um, project or PMI in all of that, in curbing this issue, and um, just what can be done to have like a turnaround on all of this uh, mess, as it were? You call it a mess, I call it a menace. Okay. Because um, when you look at the effect of building collapse, it goes beyond just the people who were, I mean, who were directly involved in the process of the collapse. Mm. You know, the environmental impact is also there. Mm. I mean, in the past few months, when you look at what had happened in Lagos State, for instance, mm. it seems government is now, you know, awakened from, um, I don't want to say slumber, but 
taking up responsibilities to be at the forefront of leading the vanguard to ensure that we eliminate quackery in our practices across the built and the construction industry. Uh, many is because um, the people who are supposed to be the, um, the practitioners, the mm. certified practitioners, are not um, really the one practicing in the field. I'll give you a very good example. When you want to board a plane, you know, you make your bookings, you have your tickets, you get to the airport, and um, you're taking through the process of being onboarded into the mm -hmm. plane, and you sit in the plane, you know, the hostess come and tell you, oh, give you certain instructions. Everybody listen because mm -hmm. they know this about the life. I mean, for safety purpose, mm -hmm. you strictly adhere to whatever instruction that is given. And next, it turns over to the pilot. Mm -hmm. So the next voice you hear is a pilot over the voice, mm -hmm. I mean, over the microphone. You know, ideally, the pilot will introduce himself to mm -hmm. you singularly because you need to affirm to everybody because that's the point of understanding about safety, mm. that the person in charge of this trip is, on is qualified mm. and is certified mm. for him to lead everybody. But that is not the case usually in the built industry. And this is one of the reasons why we have this consistent narrative about collapse. When you look at the number of people, I mean, the practitioners in the built industry, everybody, mm. I mean, there's this cliche, there's this understanding that it is not a rocket science. Yeah. So you will see everybody who are not supposed to be practicing, practicing, mm. okay? Because it is generally believed that, oh, it is what anybody can do. No commas of Okay, that. so we need to change that mindset. So one of the things we are doing, mm. Prayer Management Institute Nigeria, is to educate people on the, the right practices, mm. how projects need to be organized. Because project management is about organizing the project. Right. So as a certified project manager, you know what the principles, the processes mm. that are meant to be followed for you to derive the desirable outcome. So mm. we need to educate people. Right. Then second, we also tell people more about the need for certification. Because mm. what you don't know, you don't know. So mm. people need to seek for knowledge. So we have engineers who don't know the processes and principles of project management. The fact that they are certified engineers does not automatically make them competent project managers. Okay. So we also go through the process of educating um, the, the professionals in the built industry for them to see the need to be certified so that right. they can acquire the skills mm -hmm. and competencies that will help them to navigate through the processes in project management. All right. On the final note now, uh, in my intro, I talked about uh, uncompleted projects in Nigeria. As at the time of uh, sometime last year, it was estimated at about um, 12 trillion naira. And uh, the reports also said that about 56,000 um, abandoned projects exist in uh, most sectors across the country. How do we uh, stem this tide of uh, uncompleted abandoned projects and uh, so Nigerians can actually begin to get the benefits of uh, you know, the, the dividends of democracy and of course uh, what they are paying their taxes for? The first thing that we stand on, which I want to emphasize again, has to do with the concept of project economy. Mm. And that is the narrative around value proposition. Every okay. project has a project objective, mm. and project is time bound. Mm. You know, from initiation to the closing or completion of a project, you know, you have to consistently define, I mean, define right. the kind of value that you want to mm. derive out of the project. Most times, this is not the case when it comes to public projects. Mm. So we need to begin to look into that. When okay. a project is being initiated in the public space, we have to ensure that value is being optimized. Value is what drives the narrative. Okay. Then second, we have to continue conversation. I mm. mean, there has to be continuous evaluation and continuous conversation around the need for us to practice, practice project management, the mm. way it should be practiced on projects. Okay. Then also, there has to be these collaborative efforts. Mm. I mean, to reverse the case, the menace, is not what the government alone can do because of uh, um, lack of capacity. Yeah. So government need to see the need to collaborate with the institute, to collaborate with other stakeholders within the industry right. in order for us to bring all our efforts together right. to change the narrative. All right. Thank you so much, Ang uh, for Thank you. your time. Uh, we do appreciate it. Ang uh, Oyelaki has been my guest. He is the managing mm -hmm. director of Infinity Point uh, Nigeria Limited. He is... Uh, uh, I mentioned that he's an architect, uh, he's a versatile one, he's a seasoned one, and uh, he's had over 15 years uh, in environmental sustainability and project management uh, that spans across uh, private and public 
you know, space. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That's All right. Good. And that's the size of the show for today. Uh, Business Insights returns again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadoni. Let's do it again next time. Bye for now.